Hi, this is Jean-Luc Mosley with Key Performance Ideas, and this is how to create a backup of the nightly artifact snapshot using EPM Automate. So a little bit of background. Planning automatically creates a backup of your instance called the nightly artifact snapshot, which is available in application management. This is done on a nightly basis. However, each backup is overwritten by the latest one. So every night that it takes a backup, the one that it taken from the previous night is overwritten because they're always named artifact snapshot. So let's say you want to save one of the nightly backups so that it doesn't get overwritten and you would like to also date stamp it with the day that the backup occurred. So there's a way to do this using bash scripting in EPM Automate, and I will show you how to do that. So this is the batch for EPM Automate, and it contains an array of commands that basically download the artifact snapshot from planning, put it on your computer, and then it renames it to a new, first a new location and then adds the date stamp at the end of the name. And this will allow you to store the snapshots on your computer or re-upload them to planning afterwards. This first command on row 10 is referencing another document that contains all the variables that will be referenced later on in the script. This is that document that is being referenced and it contains all the variables and settings that are to be used. Notice that the name of this document is variables tut dot cmd. And it's important to have this be a cmd file. So to go through this, this the first few are essentially just setting the location of the batch file and the directory of EPM Automate. It also sets the location and name for a backup log in case you ever want to go back and look at the logs for the rule that has just run. It is also setting your username and password. You specify the source of your instance, source URL of your instance, your domain, the name of the source snapshot, which in planning is always going to be artifact snapshot. And finally, this is the syntax for adding the date stamp to the name of artifact snapshot in order to make it unique. Now back to the actual batch file. So after you point the batch file to that variable.cmd file, you can now proceed to log into EPM Automate and begin to download the artifact snapshot. So lines 13 through 15 are just logging into EPM Automate using your username, source URL, password, etc. Now, once you have successfully logged in, the script then automatically proceeds to calling NPM Automate and downloading the artifact snapshot file. This can be seen on line 20. Notice that when the file is being downloaded, the path is set to the variables that were defined back in the variable file. 
So in this case, log path DR and backup DR, which are referenced in this file here. Now, once this process has completed, the batch file moves on to line 23, which is just scheduling a 30-second timeout so that if the file takes a little while to download, it won't proceed to the next step until that file has downloaded. So you can change the amount of time that the sequence times out for just by changing this number here. So let's say if I wanted to change it from 30 to 60, if you have a larger instance and you're thinking the artifact snapshot might be a little bit bigger, you could just put in T space 60 instead of T space 30 on line 24. And this is the timeout function that initiates this countdown. So after the timeout phase comes really the final step, which is renaming the artifact snapshot and also moving it to a folder of your choice. So since the artifact snapshot in planning is always called the same name, artifact snapshot.zip file, first we, we specify this file in the first part of line 27, and then we move it to the desired path. Now notice that the starting path for an artifact snapshot is in the same location that EPM Automate resides on your computer. In this case, EPM Automate is in the C drive, in the Oracle folder, and in the EPM Automate folder. For many instances, this will be the case. But when you are setting this path, make sure that this is the same folder that EPM Automate is in because that's where the file was automatically downloaded to. Now, once the EPM Automate runs this artifact snapshot download, it'll then move it to the path of your desire. So the second half, what I'm highlighting here, is where you can enter whichever path you want you can specify a special folder to send this new snapshot to. And then the final portion is just the artifact snapshot with that date stamp at the end. And notice this date stamp matches what is explained here on line 18. And all that this is doing is it's just adding the specific date to the end of the snapshot to make it unique and also allows you to organize your snapshots, snapshots better if you are planning on taking a number of these over several days or weeks and archiving them. You can order them however you would like. Now once this is complete, all that line 29 is doing is just letting you know that the process has successfully completed. If there is an error, then the batch file will proceed to line 33, and you will receive an error notification saying that the migration process has failed. You can also notice that these that these error checks are kind of scattered around script a little bit. So, for example, line 15, if the login step fails from line 14, you will automatically proceed to 
the error on line 33. So this just helps when you're when you're looking at at the script in EPM Automate and you're let's say you've run it and it doesn't work out how you expected it to, it's a little bit easier to go back and try and pinpoint where the error is. Now, assuming the batch has run without any hitches, in my case, I had the artifact snapshot moving from the EPM Automate folder to a backups folder at, with the date stamp at the end. And in this case, since it's October 26, 2016, the date stamp is 10-26-16. If I were to run another one tomorrow, then that artifact snapshot would be 10-27-16, and so on and so on. So the real benefit of using this script is that you can also schedule it via the Windows Task Scheduler to run daily, weekly, or however often you want to run it. So you can just leave it alone and just have it run this single batch file. In this case, it's called backuptut.bat. You can name it whatever you want as long as you save it as a batch file, which is the .bat extension. And this allows you to easily take backups and not have to worry about having, having an issue where you need to restore something from a few days ago and you no longer have that backup, you can just go back into your archive on your computer, find whatever day you would like to grab the backup from, upload that into planning, look at it in application management and pick out whatever parts of the snapshot you need to bring into your instance. Once again, I'm Jean-Luc Mosley, and this was how to make the nightly backup of your artifact run via EPM Automate.